Let's talk about the first half. Obviously, it was a, a tough period here at the time. Second quarter, obviously, you're dealing with more restrictions all around the, all the region. Tell us a bit more about what you're seeing in terms of the new business value growth. Uh, you saw 68% lower in Hong Kong, 13% lower in China. Are you seeing signs of perhaps a bottoming out now? Yes. Uh, as you know, uh, it's been a very challenging uh, uh, first half of the year with the whole world pretty much in lockdown. And I think we, re, uh, we deliver a very resilient set of uh, results uh, in the context of this environment. Uh, VONB was down, uh, but uh, we are seeing strong recovery in the months of May and June, and going to July as well as, uh, as the markets come out of uh, lockdown. Um, the, the momentum in, uh, in China, in Vietnam, uh, in, even in uh, markets like uh, Thailand, India, uh, where India has been uh, still in quite a, a serious situation. But uh, the, the momentum that we see because of the digitalization efforts that we've taken has uh, been quite encouraging. Yeah, yeah China uh, perhaps doing a little bit better than, than the rest of your markets here. Tell us a bit more. Are you seeing signs there, given the first in, first out kind of situation we're seeing there, that there's a bit of a turning point there too? Yeah, I think, uh, as you know, uh, China came out of the, the pandemic earlier than most uh, other markets. And so, um, in fact, uh, we've seen uh, in the months of uh, July, year-on-year, month-on-month growth versus last year as well. So it's pretty much uh, recovered to pre-COVID levels of production. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about the dislocations that you're seeing. You mentioned about the remote training that you've had to do. Uh, and just given the challenges uh, of this pandemic, how have you had to adjust in terms of how you hire people and put people uh, moving around now? Yeah, well, we've taken the six months, uh, during these six months, the opportunity to digitalize, digitalize most of our uh, processes. So, uh, and the adoption rate amongst the agency force and our sales force is uh, very high. Um, for example, in Singapore, uh, uh, even after coming out of the uh, circuit breaker, um, the, the proportion of uh, new business coming through digital or remote selling is, uh, still remains at a very high level of around 80%. So the adoption rate and is uh, very high. In India, it's pra- practically all the business is coming through remote selling. Um, and uh, um, 99% of the business uh, comes through remote selling. Um, I saw 40% of your policies issued in the second quarter were done remotely. Well, it, that's it, overall. Yeah, overall. Yeah, that's Do overall. you see that as a sense of a permanent change in the industry? Well, uh, as you know, uh, insurance, uh, people still like to see, you know, it's, it's a complicated uh, planning process, in, uh, planning for the future. So uh, as uh, markets come out of uh, lockdown and as uh, uh, agents uh, are able to see their customers uh, face-to-face, um, we, we've seen, like in China, uh, uh, a, re- a reversion back to face-to-face selling. Yeah. Coming from Ping An, you obviously have the China experience. Yep. Uh, you also have this enthusiasm for innovation and technology. Yep. How do you see the technological side of, of development here for AIA? Do you want to be a leader? Yeah, I think we, uh, Ping An is Ping An. Uh, AIA is AIA. We are very different companies. Ping An is a great company, uh, done a lot uh, in the 30 years of its history. And, uh, but a- and, and similarly, AIA, AIA is um, uh, very focused on the use of technology. Uh, to power its business. So uh, um, we will be transforming our technology architecture to move to a much more cloud-based, uh, uh, using uh, modern architecture to allow us to uh, high levels of automation to uh, achieve uh, 90%, up to 90% straight through processing. And if we can achieve uh, 90% straight through processing, the whole customer experience will be transformed. Mm. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about Obviously, Stock Connect's been very well established. There's Wealth Connect now. There's mm-hmm. also Insurance Connect that's mm-hmm. become a buzzword in your industry. Mm-hmm. What shape or form do you see this initiative taking place now? And mm-hmm. what do you need to see in particular for, for markets to be ready to open the door for that money flow? I think it's still early days. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, initially, what we will see is uh, the setup of uh, service centers in the Greater Bay Area. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of... Uh, mainland customers who like to come to Hong Kong to buy Hong Kong companies' insurance products. And uh, with the restrictions on the border, it's sometimes difficult for them to assess uh, some of the services that they need. So 
the setup of uh, service centers in the Greater Bay Area, Greater Bay Area would uh, help these customers uh, get access to good uh, services. Um, well, yeah, what do our regulators need to see, though, in order for this to really, you know, for them to really open the doors? And how does it affect AIA, for example, your dynamics versus what you're seeing the mainland between your onshore and offshore clients? Well, as you know, uh, AIA uh, has a unique opportunity in China. We just uh, subsidize our operations, uh, our branch operations in Shanghai, uh, after which we can uh, uh, expand to new provinces within China. Mm -hmm. And we are very unique in the sense that uh, we are 100% ownership. So we don't have to share any of the economics of a local partner. So whether our customer buys in uh, Hong Kong or whether it buys in, across the border in the mainland, we get 100% of the economics of it. So, yeah. What, what sort of factors do you look at when you decide to expand, for example, in China? Do you look more at geography? Do you look a little bit more at distribution platform? What, what sort of determining factors? Are yeah. There? As you know, we, we now have uh, seven uh, major uh, provinces or municipalities uh, in Beijing, uh, Tianjin, Shanghai, Shenzhen. Uh, Guangdong, Xiangzhou, and uh, Hebei. Pro these are the uh, geog geographies that we uh, operate in now. Uh, with the new subsidization, we can go to uh, more provinces. You know, and as you know, each province in China is like a mid-sized uh, country in the rest of Asia. So we are actually going to uh, all these big markets. We will focus on 10 to 12 uh, new provinces in the near future, mm -hmm. uh, and each. Uh, province, uh, we are talking about hundreds of millions of uh, new, new untapped customers for us. I want to focus a little bit on, on Hong Kong as well. Yeah. Uh, we've seen new business value there continue to be very sluggish, down some 68%, as I mentioned. Uh, you know, obviously with this national security legislation that's come into effect for, for two months now, mm -hmm. what considerations do you make here uh, at AIA for companies like AIA? I mean, what, what are you looking at now to stay resilient? Well, as you know, we are headquartered in Hong Kong, uh, and we have uh, uh, we remain very optimistic about Hong Kong. Uh, we are an uh, Asian-focused uh, company. We operate in 18 markets, and really, I think um, if you look at uh, if you look at Hong Kong, it has the uh, best business and operating environment compared uh, with many of the markets uh, that we operate in or many of the developed uh, markets in the world. I think uh, the business environment still re remains uh, very, very, uh, um, very good for businesses. Yeah. Do you think with, even if they do relax restrictions, I mean, obviously you took a lot of your business before from, from mainland visitors mm -hmm. here in mm -hmm. Hong Kong. Do you see those mainland visitors coming back in the same way like they did before, or given just the political unrest we've mm -hmm. seen here that perhaps some of these offshore mm -hmm. customers are going to stay away now? Yeah, as you know, I, I've uh, worked the last 20 years in the mainland China, and the last 16 years I've, I was in Shenzhen. So, uh, and as I, and I believe that as long as um, Hong Kong uh, companies' products uh, uh, remain uh, com uh, price competitive compared to products in China, mm -hmm. the mainland Chinese customers will come back. Yeah, as, well, when when will the? It's difficult to project when the the border will open, but um, as long as the, 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 the dynamics uh, re remain, mainland Chinese uh, customers will come back. Uh, I used to have so many of my ex-colleagues, uh, uh, I know that they come over in the weekend <laughs> to Hong Kong to buy a product from uh, a Hong Kong company. Yeah. Mm. Last question, M&A, do you see more opportunities post-COVID, or is it going to be different? Yeah, uh, we are very uh, strong financially, so we are always uh, looking out for opportunities, uh, but we will be very financially disciplined, uh, looking for uh, in investments that make financial and uh, strategic, strategic uh, sense to us.